to DreamHack went to 2015, we had nine rounds of Swiss. That was a lot of Hearthstone. But we have one more game before we can actually draft the top 16 for you. We have the tiebreaker match. I'm your host, Name, and I'm here with Raven and Sol joining us at the desk as Lothar and Froden actually move along to play some Hearthstone <laughs> of their own. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you doing? Like, Sol, yes. welcome to the desk, man. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I could be doing a little bit better, you know, get all the way to, to the last game, 6-2, and two, and then fall to the last hurdle. But I figure, why not make myself useful, right, and come and, come and do some casting instead. So, good to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. sure. And Raven, uh, what have you been up to? Yeah, I mean, well, I was l on last cast. I've just been enjoying it, to be honest. Like I said uh, yesterday, this is my first DreamHack and uh, my first casting of DreamHack, of course. It's been awesome. Like, the Swiss event that everyone's talked about, only positive things. Everyone loves it. The atmosphere. And just seeing this many of the top players in one place is awesome. And obviously, yeah. casting with yourself, that's always a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. Casting with you is a pleasure as well, and casting with Solo. So we have our, our amazing desk for you guys. And, uh, well, we do have this match. This is a really important match. It's the last match, kind of. Uh, like a bonus match for the Swiss. The winner is advancing to the top 16. The loser is having the honorable 17th place, which feels bad, man. <laughs> yeah, I it's mean... It's actually worse than getting 0 2 right? Probably, it, yeah. It'll actually feel worse, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think, like, going 0-2 feels bad in the moment, but if you get this close and then miss out, like, that stays and with it's you one, for it's a one long spot. That's yeah, if, it's if there was, like, spot. three go and then you know like, oh, oh okay but like one of the seven twos goes mm. so let's explain what a tiebreaker is um tiebreakers so can you t explain what tiebreakers are overall um tiebreakers so the way swiss works you you end up with a, a top cut which you designate so in this case it's 16 but there will be more than uh 16 players who are tied on the same result where it gets cut off so you have tiebreakers put into place based on the records of the people that you beat and that you lost to and that decides the final rankings um but this is being run slightly differently in that we're actually having a playoff for the last spot as to where the cut is in the in the bracket so yeah so one of those guys is gonna be 17th and eliminated from the tournament yep. And uh, one is actually going to join the top 16. And before we show you the bracket, we'll have this one match. And uh, let's talk about the players, because one of them is actually a Korean player who made BlizzCon two times. It's one of the most recognized, one of the best players, Kranich. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, only player to make back-to-back -back BlizzCons, you know, th th with the length of the, the tournament season that BlizzCon is, you know, that's an insane level of consistency in a, in a game that, you know, does contain variants. So, sure, he didn't have, like, amazing results. He hasn't won BlizzCon, but to be back-to-back, -back, you know, there and representing your region is a huge accomplishment, and he's just a fantastic player. So. Yeah, Absolutely. and obviously being on Team Dignitas, we see, uh, I mean, there's Chucky, Green Sheep, Blackout all here. So, the whole... Uh, a good squad of guys to practice with. All these guys are pretty decent, and I've seen them play relatively well. Green Sheep's through, right? Yes. yes Green, Green Sheep's through. through. So there's one of his teammates through. I don't know about Chucky, though, because I know Blackout isn't. Chucky's eliminated. Chucky oh, is Chucky eliminated. eliminated. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, two, two out of four. Not yeah. too bad. And it's actually amazing because I was um, I was talking to Granich two rounds before. He was at 5-2, and uh, he thought he's out. I was like, Granich, why are you so sad? He's like, yeah, I lost two games. I'm probably out of the tournament. I'm like, Granich, seriously, just win two more. <laughs> Seven two, mate. You you make it, man. You can make it, and he and he's here. And one, Ooh, yeah. So I just like, <laughs> Kranich I agree. Kranich is, is playing, playing face yeah. shaman. Yes. So this looks really similar to the Luffy list that's been going around. Right. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, Jungle's uh, got a pretty good opener himself, and he looks like Dragon Priest with Bran. So we've seen the power of uh, Bran earlier in matches, uh, mainly I guess in in Purple's Maligos Warlock. Uh, which has some good dragon effects, and then with the priest as well, like the, the opportunity to like double buff minions and stuff is insane. Yeah, so Bran from the very beginning. Bran is a it's a little bit different in in Dragon Priest than it is in something like Malilock. Like Malilock, Bran is all about like one off huge effects, yeah. right? Like you Blackwing Corruptor for six, or you get like an enormous Twilight Drake. Whereas Bran in Dragon Priest, it's like small incremental yeah, buffs, like extra over buffs and over again, as opposed yeah. to a massive moment. By the way, guys, we didn't talk about Jungle Bro. I love that a lot. So he's from Jungle and he is a bro. Yeah, Jungle Bro R. Ah, that's um, I'm sure that's how his name is. Like, on honestly, he is a local player. He is from Sweden. Oh, okay. And uh, he is one of the guys who who had an opportunity to come here and play at the DreamHack. And you know he's one step away from top 16 as well. So yeah, and and you, you look at because this is a tie break, he's extremely close to just going through. Yeah. Like regardless, and you know if there's ever a tournament to make like to put your name out there, this this is the one. Like if he makes top 16, that's going to be huge for him. Yeah, that might be the start of his career as a Hearthstone pro player. 
But, um, you know, interesting cards already. So, Brandon Dragon Priest, we mm -hmm. touched on. But Chromagus as well. Not something you see too often in, say, standard Dragon Priest lists. No, it's, it's quite interesting as well because um, there has been a couple of Priest players in the in the bracket today. Uh, AKA Wonder, who I just played, had brought Priest. Uh, Zetalot, of course. Of course. Had like... Priest. Um, but they're playing very, very anti aggro lists. You know, Zetalot, famous for Control Priest, is yep. playing a very anti aggro Control Priest. Um, but Wonder is playing a very anti aggro Dragon Priest. He has six one drops, he has Shadow Wear Pain, etc. This seems like a much more control heavy you know mid-rangey dragon priest which may struggle a little bit more oh, against uh, being lava bursted in the face repeatedly yeah i mean what i mean chromagus is just like a card that says i want to play the long game yes, right because exactly. the card uh, gets significantly better every single turn could yep. you double draw in but on the flip side we've got kranich playing the aggro of shaman which is a deck i've been messing about with for the past few days and i kind of like it a lot. It's, it's so powerful. There's so much damage, and I I love the fact that it can um, with the addition of the trog, the one drop, the one three that gains extra damage based on overload. Cards like, uh, oh my god, what's the draw card called? Ancestral. Something. Ancestral knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Ancestral like cards like that. It normally seems too bad because of the overload, but right. suddenly just because of trog. The overload is actually a good thing in, in this deck specifically. Right. So, uh, just knowing the aggressive shaman, what do you what can you say about Kranich's hand? Is it good for now, or is it subpar? Um, the the problem is his hand isn't great because the, the lava burst is normally a finisher. The lava shock you can still use it to remove stuff. Um, but what he really wanted with the trogs early on, he plays trogs, juggler, uh, creepers. You know, like the general early aggressive minions, the abusives, uh, and lepanomes, but. The, the problem here is, like, we saw Jungle like, have double Twilight Whelp, and he had uh, the Wimmer staging, right? Mm -hmm. So if there's ever a good opening against a deck like this, that's definitely it. Because one of the problems that, say, you have against Dragon Priest, an aggressive deck, Wimmer staging as a 2-4 taunt early on is a problem. If you choose to try and silence mm -hmm. it or use some removal, well, there's Twilight Guardians in the deck, and probably, you know, you might see Belchers as well. Right. So there's still not well, worse minions later on that you need to deal with on top of that. Is Twilight Trick a possibility because he's playing Bran as well? So it is a Dragon Priest. Uh, yeah, that makes a bit of sense. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, like I said, you know, Bran in, in Dragon Priest, it's, it's small little buffs. You know, you get one extra attack on a Twilight Guardian, one extra attack on a Worm Seven Restation. extra health on a Twilight Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to play something a bit more explosive, but, you know, the, the, the double buff on Twilight Drake is often not that relevant because mm. um, how often do Twilight Drakes get killed with damage, right? Like normally they just get silenced or they get executed. Yeah. Yeah, the difference between 4.9 and 4.18 is not huge, really. It's a really interesting card, actually, in, in the Shaman's hand in, sh in Kranich. He's got like Thalnos, which Love is something that isn't in, say, the standard list that's going around at no. the moment, or at least the, the, you know, the initial version. But you know, there's a lot of times where you really want that spell power totem to win the game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and to be able to just have one in hand is pretty useful. Yeah, I really like the a lot of sense. I really like the shaman overall because a lot of players didn't play test versus this deck. This deck is quite new at this moment. Yep. Yeah. So mm. if you surprise your opponent with uh, a really bursty shaman deck, you can just get to the top 16 and just win a couple of games. Yeah. Yeah, and even if you have, you know, th there's a little bit of it around on ladder, but it's the Raynad Mech version that's caught on on ladder mm -hmm. with people playing the Mech Warpers and the Whirling Zappo. This this version based on uh, on Luffy's deck with the Wolf Riders and Argent Horse Riders and yeah. stuff like that. You know, pure face charm. Yeah. This isn't really something you can practice against. Very very good surprise deck, I guess. Yeah. There's another, I mean, the uh, the Shrinkmeister isn't fantastic. It's just sort of been placed there to just add something else on board. Because as we can see, the jungle's hand is now getting a bit... There's not a lot of uh, Shadow of Death targets in this deck, yeah. if any, actually. Yeah, he ran out of steam a couple of turns ago where his, his turn was basically just Norsha Cleric Pass. Um, like you said, he had a really good start with a couple of whelps, but since then, he's you know, he's drawing all the control matchup cards, you know, the Death, the Chromagus, the Light Bomb, that's all stuff that you're going to use against mid-range and control decks, yeah. whereas against aggro, you just want to keep drawing your low cost cards for as long as possible. Yeah, and something that's really uh, good as well for Kranich at the moment is a lot of aggro decks burn out and, and run out of juice early on if they get, like, even, even remotely dead weird but yeah he still has a really powerful hand and he has Thalnos that he's just going to drop down now and I like this just to just cycle through oh. more damage he's got so much burst yeah look at but that but when a top deck holy nova hits yeah that's a problem oh he's fine he put he draws trog okay yeah <laughs> I mean it, it wasn't the end of the world if, you know he could have decided he to light bomb there if he felt under enough pressure but the holy nova obviously mm. so much so superior to the to the light bomb mm. in that situation but. this is this is really nice so that he can just trog he can play wolf rider he can lightning bolt the three two and still tow him yep and he still has 
even more damage in hand with the lava shock, the lava burst, and the rock fire. He could also decide like it's, it, there's always a decision with this deck as to when you want to unlock your mana with lava shock because yeah. um, yes, it unlocks your mana, but you still have to spend two mana to do it on the turn that you yeah, choose. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, yeah. you can do it on the turn where you overload all the turn afterwards. So he could actually do like tunnel troll, wolf rider face, lightning bolt face, and then just lava shock the uh, the. Um, Shrinkmeister instead. And it looks like, yeah, that's the play he's going for, but he's not yeah. actually going to use the Wolf Rider. He's just going to go ahead and Lava Burst. Yeah, and what's important here is actually by playing the Lava Burst. Oh, that was a oh. mistake. Uh oh. Really? Um, what he's doing as what? well is he's putting the Trog out of range of a Cabal, which is actually pretty important. The Trog should make an impact here. I'm confused as to why he didn't follow through with that play. I feel like Lightning Bolt face and Lava Shock the. The uh, the three two was well. A, he was obviously good. changed the uh, the plan. Changed his mind halfway through. Yeah, yeah. yeah, interesting. But I think something that's key as well is that rock biter. Um, is something you normally want to hold on to, especially yes, versus please. priest for a doom hammer. This deck normally plays double doom hammer to really get that burst in and get that oh, that so much damage over a few turns. What do you guys think about this matchup overall? Um, like who's an advantage because Kranish is really aggressive and he got a lot of good card draw. But then overall, Priest should be in a better position, right? It is an anti-aggro deck. I feel like it depends on the um, the build of the, the deck. Yeah. Like, like I said, if you're playing like the six one-drops version, then you're probably really heavily favored. But in this deck, you know, funky cards like Chromagus aren't going to do anything. So you might just be, get overwhelmed. But that Ancestral Knowledge top deck that turn was amazing. So yeah. you just got to immediately cancel out the overload with the Lava Shock yeah, as and well. And just look at the damage in hand. Are you were saying there's, the there's, the there's no Shadow of Death targets in this deck, Raven, Okay, apparently. yeah. There, okay, <laughs> there is after the Trog already smacked you like four times yeah but like again what's so good about this deck is your odds on just drawing raw damage is insane mm -hmm. like look at his hand already he's got so much yeah chooses to cabal the taunt there not so much because he wants a zero two taunt but because he wanted to get it out of the way so he could trade with the uh totem golem so strong yeah. play from jungle brother i have a flavor text for you guys mm -hmm. from trog trucks th this this trucks flavor text is actually it might be ugly, but, but try keeping up your beauty routine without the natural daylight in the tunnel. Uh, okay. Thanks okay. for that, Nimsh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Nimsh knowledge. That's what we like to hear. Oh. Use, use this Harson knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crackle. Useless knowledge is the best oh, knowledge. Crackle, oh, crackle, please. Three. Oh, please. Jungle Bro is so happy about it. Yeah. I would be happy too if a crackle on my 4 or 5 hit for 3 and there's no way to deal with it. This is so I amazing. Like, Look at him, he's so excited about this. It's just the innate nature of Crackle, right? Like, when you cast it, one player is going to be happy and yeah. one player is going to be miserable. Yeah. And it's poor Hearthstone, though. Like, Kranich is um, having a poker face, kind of. Like, he's super focused and not um, giving too much emotions. Yeah. This but probably, as well, displays the experience difference yes. between yeah, these absolutely. two players. Absolutely. Into Kranich, as we said earlier, he has played in BlizzCon twice. And then, you know, Jungle, we imagine, hasn't played in too many tournaments himself. And he gets this far, and nerves can come into it. But also, you know, he's pumped. Like, he has everything to play for here. And he is in a great position right now with Kromagas. He still has the heals. There is not that much oh, damage. Oh, just before. three Valens chosen. <laughs> yeah, well. Okay. Cast yeah. them all next turn, please. I want to see this. That that low rolling crackle on the Cabal Shadow Priest was so important because it what it did is it let Jungle Brawl be in a comfortable enough position that he could develop the Chromagus and actually start Ooh. to get value out of it. And double holy. That's so much damage. What do you think uh, about the wait, no wait, wait, Earth wait, Shock wait, on Chromagus? Fail is chosen. Wait. That's so yeah. much spell damage. So that's 2, 4, 6, 12, 16, and then the Holy Smite will do 6, 5. five. 11 so he has 21 10. this turn. Yeah. Wow. What? I know he has more, because using the Holy Smites is actually more damage, but still not quite lethal. Would hmm. you have Earth Shocked the Chroma Ghost? Uh, no. You, okay. You're you playing a face deck, and that Earth Shock is purely res reserved for a Twilight haunts. Guardian at this really point. Yeah. <laughs> you, haven't, you haven't seen any, so you know like you've used a bunch oh. of your burn, a Crackle's gone, a Lava Burst is gone, oh. etc. He used one to, to the minion. Yeah, I mean, Ooh, the, the, I, want, I wanted the six <laughs> to the face. <laughs> this this is still fine though. It sets up lethal for the next turn. He knows he's not gonna die. Wow, I would have liked I to see it split up. Yeah, because yeah. oh, maybe maybe he's a bit too excited, and that might actually be an issue. Yeah, because um, that was a bit one crazy. On, one on each was uh, definitely a bit more reasonable. Because Earth Shock is a car. Yes. Oh man, that's so much damage. So, if the if you Earth Shock the six eight, 
There's 10. Yeah, there we go. He's probably just at that moment realized, <laughs> yeah. I kind of should have spread those across. <laughs> yeah. There's a reason that spreading the uh, buffs is a good thing. Um, and it does give Kranich a, a tiny window back into the, this game, that little mistake yeah. from, from Jungle Brawl. It's, it's it's still fairly hopeless, but that mistake it just shows the importance of, like, even when you're that far ahead, make sure yeah. you're, you're doing the little things right. Well, it's I mean, still a huge dragon. Yeah, it's still a huge 6-7 on the board well, that's threatening to kill him. On my break, I played a game of Shaman. I got to, uh, I was on two health against a priest, and I actually did Ancestral Knowledge into Leaf when the priest was on like 12. Mm -hmm. So I just rolled the spell power totem and then double crackle. So like, you know, the damage is there. Not when you draw a juggler though. Knife juggler is not gonna do it. He could, yeah, he, yeah. he could roll taunt totem, kill the one four, and technically be alive. But he doesn't want to mess Look at Jungle Bro. Guns. He's so happy about the win. This is pure Hearthstone. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is what I mean. Going to like, I imagine his first big tournament, or maybe his first tournament full stop. That's a live event, not online. I'm performing this well, like, he must just be ready to burst at this point. It's like, the excitement must be insane. Is he at the, at the point to put Life Coach to shame? Or is he still far away? Uh, I, no, think, no, I, think, no, I think Life Coach, coach still is, got is still right? the, the king of mannerisms. Like, yeah. he's, he's one of the most fun guys to watch play Hearthstone. The reaction sure. master. Yeah, absolutely. Although okay. I have to say, sitting across from Ekop is pretty entertaining as well. <laughs> I, got, I got that experience. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty entertaining, I have to say. <laughs> Well, you're pretty happy playing versus Hiccup as well. Yeah, I mean, how could you not be in that series, right? It's so much crazy stuff. We were both just having a good time. That was really fun. It was even Hiccup's tweet afterwards, yeah. where it's like, yeah, I probably get deserved to, knock, uh, to get knocked out because I BM that game and then lost. Yeah. He was like, yeah, GG, Sol, GG. Yeah. Wow. And it's like, yeah, that's fair enough, Hiccup, actually. All right, fair guys, enough. so Sha unfortunately Shaman is out because his last hero standing, Shaman eliminated, and Jungle Brawler has to stay Shall with bring the Priest. Mm -hmm. I will fight with it, with which honor. is an interesting build because we've seen that Chromacus and uh, we've seen Brown as well. Yes. Was there anything else specific? Um, Holy Smites? He, he was yeah, the Smites. The Holy, Smite. the Smites. Holy Smite isn't Smites. core in yeah. Dragon Priest. Neither is Light Bomb. You can play without it. So the fact he was playing a Light Bomb as well mm -hmm. is worth knowing. Uh, but I like Kranich. Looks like he uh, he had Quartermaster in his initial mulligan, so it looks like this is a mid-range paladin. Yep. Um, so I really like this pick against Dragon Priest, especially if he's playing just a card True Heart, because that card pretty much single-handedly beats Priest. Yep. And why is that exactly? Can you explain uh, it? So the, uh... basically, if you if you still have Quartermasters in your deck, if you haven't used them, you basically force the Priest to AOE every turn of the game after you've played just a card, because if they don't, you're just threatening so much damage and so much board control with the Quartermasters. So eventually they just burn out all their AOE and and then you just spiral Job the board done. and so on. So. so really similar to uh, Paladin versus Warrior. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 The only flip side to that is if this game goes late because, say, it isn't Secret Paladin, mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, this deck is built to go a lot later than that, Andrew? then, like, he does play Chromagus. Yes. Which w can't really be PGH'd. Right. So, you know, maybe that, you know, he does have something in place to actually take the later games, which what the deck really looks like it's, it's made to do as well. It's sort of a 50-50 split because the Dragon Priest are normally really good at anti-aggro because mm -hmm. of the low drops, but then he inserts like really late game cards because I imagine there's a Ysera in here yeah, as well. Yeah, I was going to well. say, we didn't see Ysera in the last game, but you'd, you'd have to imagine. You can't imagine there's a world where you'd swap Ysera Well, yeah. you might Priest, kind of yeah. swap. Is there on Chromagus and have Chromagus as your end game? You might do. Yeah. It's just you go it's more not aggressive. like for for one turn, Ysera does so much more than Chromagus. Right. That's the problem, because like you get the card from Ysera at the end of the turn. Chromagus, unless you play it with like Power Word Shield or something, you have to wait till you following turn to get that card draw. So it's just nowhere near Maybe as reliable. He doesn't have Ysera. He In didn't craft collection. Ysera. Oh my god. It's possible. That is also possible. There we go. Okay, there's just a car. So now Kranich can just be prepared to play the long game here. Yeah. Um, he has already seen the Chromagus. You know, we talked about how much of a threat it is, but he has seen it, so he can he can allocate something in his mind and say, okay, I'm saving that for Chromagus, you know, be it in a quality or a, yeah. um, a keeper of Olderman, anything like that. And something that really <laughs> comes comes into playing Last Hero Standing as well. If this was Conquest, it doesn't matter he's seen Chromagus because he's not playing Priest again. Yeah. Whereas Last Hero Standing, information is actually very valuable. I, I look at Jungle Bro. He's know, like, he's so, so happy. happy. Yeah. He's like, I got this. <laughs> My free free is so good now. Double mini bot is perfectly fine here. Nice sticky ball presence. Not not under threat of anything like Holy Nova yet. So oh, there is a Twilight Guardian though. There is a Twilight Guardian, so he's gonna need to find something to to push through at some point. But his curve is looking pretty great. There is here. a Sarah. Yeah. There is your Sarah. Okay. So okay. I guess you just slam Lothar pass, right? Because you, you, you avoid yeah. any sort of holy nova uh, stupidity. Yeah. Uh, and it does set up next turn as a really difficult clear. 
He's just debating here. Like, there's there's merit to passing. There's merit to attacking with one. There's merit to attacking with both. It's just, you know, about mm -hmm. what number do you want to leave that Twilight Guardian at? Yeah. And what number do you want to leave it at after he heals it as well? Like, you have yeah. to consider all those things when you're playing. And also, space. maybe he's already thinking about, where does this Fallen's Chosen go? Right. So, like, where, where do I cast this? Because I kind of messed up last game. Mm -hmm. and there's the Light Bomb as well, which is going to be pretty nice, actually. There's one AoE. Yes. So once the Justigar comes down, there's... It doesn't look good to do uh, light bomb down one ones, but there's probably other stuff on the board as well, right? right. So there's at least one, and you know, Ysera's probably planning on giving him all the rest with Awakens. Right now it looks like Kranich is actually having less cards, so Jungle Bro will have an opportunity to clear the board. Like, he has a lot of minions, good quality minions. Mm -hmm. He has the clears, he has uh, Sylvanas as well, so more good quality cards. Uh, so do you still think like Kranich can just put that uh, plan into play with Justicor and the, and the Doom? Or will he not have enough time? To I think at this point he almost has to, to right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah he's, you he's have no to. other option. It's, it, you, you'd like to play it on a more stable board than this, and obviously playing the 6 mana 6 3 on turn 6 it is like a, a huge tempo loss. It's such a, an under quality Ooh. minion. Uh, oh, but that, yeah, that, that double trade. Okay, yeah. now we 100% play Justicor True Yeah, because you then suddenly. The uh, the true heart can actually challenge the four four. You s you leave him one mini bot, um, one mini bot oh. without a shield and one mini bot with. Actually, or do you, do you just like consecrate because the value too much here? Uh, it looks like he is going to go from Jessica, but I think the I delay wonder. is because he would be a little bit exposed to Holy Nova with because he'd, he'd end up leaving the Azir Drake on board. Yeah. Um. So it, like attack into the the remaining shield on the shielded mini bot, and then Holy Nova would be a really strong turn. But it's off curve for for Jungle Brawl, so I think he's just going to end up going for it here. I mean, he would have consecrated already. Yeah, yeah it would have been done. Yeah. Are you happy if the Holy Nova drops? Well, you're not entirely happy, but on the other hand, one Holy Nova is out then, and you right. want to get. The clears out of the priest's hand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The only problem is it's it's okay if you have a good follow-up. And at the moment he doesn't. There's his own concept. He, he does. He presses hero power. That's a fantastic follow-up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but but it, if you could hero power and play another minion that, that's it, decent, that would be nice. It really doesn't matter. You just keep like you just press hero okay, power. Okay, so now on. confirmed like, this yeah. match will happen because Kranich just presses hero power and he wins. Is that this, what you're saying? This game's it, over, yeah. I, I okay. would only say double the dude, double the excitement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's so many jokes that could be made from that statement. But okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just leave that one. Yeah, let's just, let's just <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was Family not my fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so anyway, um, Shadow of Pain comes down on one of the two twos, and another Twilight Guardian comes out, which seems pretty okay. Uh, yeah, True Silver's better now. See, that's that's a nice turn. That's pretty nice. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good, good turn. That was a good draw. And then you press the hero power. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So you know, under normal situations, you maybe consider Aldoring that, so you could retain your two one on the board. But when you can just summon, Gain, yeah, when yeah. you just summon one ones at will like this, like just make sure you press it every turn, and you just spiral well ahead of the priest. Now suddenly, the plays don't look too attractive for Jungle Brawl this turn. Yeah, Savannah's isn't an option because it just gets dealt with, and then another two one ones on the board. <laughs> so. Oh, that top deck though! Wow, that was crazy. That was he good, can right? have even more one ones, guys. That's must have battle thrown. Mm. So yeah, hugely important small taunt off the top there, just to protect the Azir Drake from the the threatening True Silver Champion. But again, he's going to need a bit more than that. He's going to need that Ysera to stick for a long mm. time. And we do see there isn't an answer. You know, Aldor Peacekeeper is is a neutralizer, but it's not an answer. He need, he's going to need something like a Keeper of Old Amount or a Quality or a, an Iron Beak Owl to Reporting deny the, the long-term value of Ysera. Well, he's probably playing double quality at the best. Um, it's possible. You know, some people do only still only choose to use one. Um, it depends how many of the extra cards you want to fit in. Midrange Paladin is very much Ooh, a list that... Oh, look at that Chromagus on curve. Ooh, Chromagus into Ysera might just be enough here. And he can kill the free free. Well, he should be afraid of the quartermaster. But then, if the quartermaster drops, he can always light bomb afterwards. And yeah. like, even even if there is a qu quartermaster, oh, those dudes are gonna sick. attack in Chromagus anyway. Like, you can't have Chromagus on board. Right Unless now. he wants to go face Smoke as the mid range paladin. Um, yeah, <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Um, but yeah, the Chromagus is good because, like, like you said, if he deals with a Chromagus, his ability to deal with Ysera is Hey, like, oh, look less. at that keeper of your demand. <laughs> Keeper of you to man. Um, he does have an option to, to clear it here using the Consecrate, but it would take up his whole board. But um, you can give consideration to that, because looking at your hand right now, you definitely don't have an answer to Isera next turn. 
Um, but I definitely, like, you'd, you'd have to be on some crazy reads to not keep a Revolter Man that thing this yeah. turn, so. Yeah, absolutely. You just want to kill this as fast as possible. And also after that, you have a pretty good board. Do you want to just run two in and then muster here? Or, or do you just skip muster because you've got heal power? Yeah, this is fine. I yeah. like this more. This is this is very similar to a game I played against uh, AKA Wonder, which was Paladin against Priest, where I sat with muster for battle in my hand for like six turns. Because you like, just, just don't need it no anymore. There's no point in casting this. That, like, that one, attack, uh, one attack weapon probably yeah, isn't going to make exactly. much difference in the Priest. It's like oh. I'm mustering every turn for free oh, anyway. Oh, look at that oh, equality. Wow. <laughs> Kranich is a god at just <laughs> top decking answers here. Oh, and the problem is, like, oh, okay. no. so like, what do you think about the draw from Ysera? Out of all, everything he could have drawn, especially with now that we can see Ysera was insta dealt with, how good is that Drake? Not great. It's not you great. need Awakens. Uh, yeah. There probably isn't a BGH target in your deck as the Dragon Priest, and the Paladin probably plays a BGH. It is something that some people are cutting because of the extra keepers now that you can use to deal yeah. with big things. Um, but you have a pretty good chance of just giving your opponent a... A uh, BGH target, and there you go. Like that seems played like a good light, light bomb. Oh no! Did he get light? No, you played double light bomb. Right? Yeah, he got double light bomb. There See, was he, double light. he didn't get it from Chrome, I guess, did he? Wait, no, no, no. He didn't. He is yeah. actually playing double light bomb. What's the first light bomb? That's the yeah, but he's got yeah. the second one in yeah, hand. He's got the second one in oh, hand. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's okay, played. You know cool. when you said earlier about yeah, the, you know, it's probably just a single one yeah, in Dragon yeah, Priest, yeah. but he's actually going for double light bombs. That's, believe it or not, going to help clear those one ones out. It yeah. is, yeah. But you think about like what he really achieved with that light bomb. He killed a keeper that already got value and an outdoor that yeah. already got value. Like, it wasn't it, it great. It looked was it? like a really nice light bomb, but it was just killing hero powers. Must have. Yeah. So for now, it seems like um, the game is exactly going as the solo predict solo's prediction. Just creating the dudes, and then priest has to clear those dudes. Yeah. You're just you're just forced to. You're just threatening quartermaster, and if if the if they let quartermaster happen, then you just lose the game. It just pushes too much damage, and it pushes too much board control. More importantly, because yes, you can light bomb the the quartermaster board afterwards. But if they've already used all those board, those dudes to, to trade off yeah, your board, then yeah, what does it matter? So out of interest, because there are some matchups in warrior, especially especially like the control warrior mirror, yeah. where people mulligan for true heart. Yes. W would you mulligan for True Heart in this match? I keep True Heart yeah. against Priest, okay. yeah, absolutely. But would you, like, mulligan for it? Oh, no, I don't mulligan you for it. You wouldn't mulligan for it, but if I have keep. it, my yeah, okay. Because in Control Warrior, I actually mulligan for, for True Heart a lot of the time. Because okay. th that card, it can just win you the game. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but yeah it's not as not this, quite the same, but as you said, if you've got it, you should definitely keep it. As we can see being displayed by Kranich. Right, uh, this, this is just the crazy stuff it lets you do, right? He's just had to trade his entire board into a um, into a. And he Sylvanas. can just refill. He just, he just mind, refills. So, yeah. That's the, it is, it's very crazy. Well, he can just create five dudes in one turn for five mana. Yep. It, make, it makes me sad that just a car's effect on Hunter isn't this good, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no one liked that comment. No. Everyone hates Hunter except me. Oh, well. That yeah, is a pretty one. strong turn from Jungle Brawl, though, all things considered. He's left with a Light Bomb and a Dream at this point, but he is a long way ahead on board. So, in terms of bombs, what's left from the Dragon Priest? Ysera's gone, Chromagus is gone. Sylvanas is gone, both Velens have gone. Dr. Boom, maybe? Both Light Bombs have gone, yeah. Dr. Boom, Chromagus, and Ysera. I'm just trying to think of what Kranich could possibly save the Owl for. Not that he has, he has used it, which is good. But I uh, wonder what, like, if he was going to hold on to it, what's actually left yeah, to hold no, on I, for, I, I right? think the Owl this turn is definitely oh. correct. And suddenly, like, oh, we have <laughs> gas. Yeah. We can play two Shredders and Hero Power next turn. That feels pretty good. That's a really powerful turn. Oh, look at that. He can steal the Owl. And that's a yeah. decent four or five uh, Wait, bodies. he just has to, right? Both mini bots have gone, so that's yeah, probably that the nice? best thing you're going to get. Huh? Oh, he's, he's, he's he, thinking, yeah. Yeah. Yes, he, he's thinking what's, probably just what's going there through the well. motions. Because he's already a Shrink Master, right? He's already well. used a Shrink And I'm guessing yeah. he, a lot of decks don't run two Dragon Priests. They only use one, right? Yeah. Well, it, yeah. Average is like, I don't know, 1.3. One, one, one one <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think go, just got like 1.5. <laughs> yeah. What are the Shrink Master targets? Like the Shredders, for example, right? Shredders, yeah, Belchers, things like that. Yeah, so holding on to Cabo Shadow Priest would be an option as well. Second Keeper is a, a possibility. You could choose to deal with that 7 6 right now before it does too much damage. Just uh, Keeper, True Silver, load up some dudes. Um, but definitely it's, it's nothing hard. wrong with Double Shredder it, yeah, either. It's, it's hard to ignore Double Shredder here, yeah. or Power here. Especially because you can pick off the Owl as well. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to ignore putting that many. Reporting for duty. Yeah, that's true. That's really important. 
Is, oh. is this the in point? Before, in yeah. before everyone calls bad shredder placement on the board. I was going to say, is this the point where it's our duty as casters to talk about piloted shredder placement? <laughs> you uh, it's the only thing Twitch chat's concerned with. You had a discussion with the shredder versus AK1 there. I did, yeah. He said after the game, it's like, oh, why don't you, like, you need to put your shredders in the middle. It's really important as Paladin. And it, it, it basically, it comes from a thing where, like, um, my, my stream chat says it a lot to troll me. Like, oh... You know, you, you missed your shredder placement or whatever. So I've started deliberately putting it in the worst possible point <laughs> just to troll them back. And then that's leaked over and actually uh -oh. cost me in tournament as well. It's so. trolled yourself. Souls, viewers, yeah. you have a lot to answer for. Yeah. You, you lost in that game. I think that's it. Sure, let's go with yeah. that. If I can use that as an excuse, yeah. we'll take it. Go for that's it. Fine. Take anything you can get. Man. Yeah. What do you guys think about the creatures from Shredder? Ooh, they're Not definitely Pegel. interesting. Uh, I mean, that's a pretty nice average, right? Yeah. You have one really threatening aggressive minion and one very control-heavy resource minion. Both of which require a pretty immediate answer, you'd imagine. Yep. Because the Paladin's already ahead on cards at the moment, mm -hmm. like, you kind of don't want him to get more ahead, even if it is just a you know a, a chance. Yeah, it's, it's just such an impossible situation because he's, a, he's ahead on cards and he doesn't need cards. Yeah, he's, he can ahead, just press he's always the ahead card. on board as well. Yeah. Well, cards are not bad, actually. I mean, cards are never a bad thing, but you could play this matchup oh, with, well. with, with, with very few cards in hand. No card, though. There's, there's Tyrion now. Yep. Do you want to even play Tyrion at this point? Well, Cause because it, because of the true silver cleans the seven four up so well, yeah, and you can just I, run I, a one one in, just hero power again. Yeah, I, I like this turn a lot. Yeah, more. and this there is, is nice. a possibility of a mind control because you've seen so many unusual cards. funky cards. Yeah. One mind control can be dodged, and uh, Zetalot was playing one mind control. Yeah, oh, really? yeah that's true. Uh, oh, in no, control no, pre I kind of would have liked him to keep up the. Nah. I don't know. Doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Mm. He's setting up lethal either way. I think at this point, he, like, he could have even just not keep it. Yeah. He just it wouldn't have really changed much. Would he? There is a Corruptor in us, nice pickup, but. Uh, <laughs> Light bomb. Mm -hmm. But light bomb does guess, no yeah, damage yeah, yeah. to Pagel. Yeah, so leaving leaving the Pagel is actually better yeah. because of light bomb. And you've seen one, ca one Cabal, right? Pagel doesn't yep. work. Oh. Yeah, Pagel's broken. So now it's just what? Muster? Oh, we can't muster in hero power, right? And and uh, if he's master, hero power, quartermaster. He's seen double light bomb. There's too many minions, though, right? Nova. He's bought uh, to be full. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If he's swinging at face, he's doing one of the two, though. He's either tyranning or quartermastering. Do you just wait to quartermaster? I mean, you've seen two light bombs. I just don't bombs, think it's yeah. at that point where you said earlier, it just doesn't matter. And you've seen both Velens, so I think he'd need exactly second Drake into Holy Nova yeah. to clear this board. Well, oh, right. yeah, well, <laughs> there is only that's no, a card. Not enough. But again, the problem is, it, if he that. didn't play Quartermaster, he just, yeah, he, he would have to sort of clear the board with Holy Nova. Yep. And then you just set the board up again. And just, like, as you said, Son, you, you know, fair play, you called it. You kind of know what you're talking about, I guess. Um, <laughs> you, um, that's exactly how the match played out. I suppose it's one of those things where the second two heart comes down in a safe enough position. And against Dragon Priest, it's not too often you get rushed down. Right. Um, that, like, you can just play it and then, you know, the game runs from there. Right? I would point out that um, Jungle Broad did have uh, an opportunity. You know, the turn before Just a Car came down, we, we all sort of reacted to the fact that he made really defensive trades. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, as the Dragon Priest player, you need to understand that you're not winning the long game in that. You know, you almost need to play mid range Druid. Just, you know, you don't have the quality finishers. Yeah. You, need you need to be that. You need to be playing that style. You know, even, even with the greedy deck that he has, he's not going to win the long game. Right. So, a lot of greedy decks. Locked in priest again with you, Sarah. Yeah, this this just looks like a priest deck again. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we know, I imagine. There ah. we go. It's Paladin. Oh man, this ah. looks so control. I this is like so controlly. His decks are so cool. This has the to be a re this has to be a Reno, right? It has to be a Reno. This. Yeah, we've seen uh, mind control tech and Kalfazar, mm -hmm. right? So. If it's not, it's the most late game controlly paladin. Yep. It, if it's not, it must contain two lay on hands. Well, it is yes. a late game paladin, but. On Chromicus, he just wants to play the same deck again. He just likes. Dra is this Brian Kibler incarnate? Like, yeah. he just wants the to e play e big dragon. The EU version of Brian European Kibler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. European Kibler. Can, can production just scrub the name out? <laughs> e EU Kibler? <laughs> you just want to play big dragons. Come on. He's a dragon, bro. <laughs> Well, he actually got the Zombie Chow, which is really important because with so many late game cards, your deck might not be that stable, and you can actually get all of them in the early, in the opening. So getting those three bombs in the, in the Mulligan might have been okay because when he threw them away, there was no chance he was going to get them back in the yep. opening hand. I'm not sure about the attack there with Zombie Chow because he has Mind Control Tech in hand, so he actually gives Kranich the opportunity to play around yeah, Mind Control Tech here if he wanted to. Kranich is going to turn that down, but you 
kind of imagine this deep in with this like important game, Kranich would have done his research yeah. on the list and might know that mind control tech is a possibility. But, but on the flip side though, it depends because if Jungle Bros not particularly lined up against anyone, Kranich knows right, well enough right, to right, ask. Right. And yeah, because Jungle Bros not been streamed, sure. So like he's actually one of the harder players to get the information on. Yeah, makes sense. Well, but you kind of want to see mind mm. control right now, I think, as Kranich, because late later in the game, mind control can be a pain. If you if you have so many dudes and you have more bombs on board, that's true. Right, right now it's not stealing anything. Like whatever it steals, it's fine. Yeah, but it's like it's a nice play on curve, though, right? Like playing it on turn three is one of the times it makes you happiest, just because it, it fits your curve nicely. You can it, it increases your chances of something like a blessing your king's target as a follow up. Um, so I wouldn't have minded seeing it come down there, but at the same now, time, like, like you say, you can afford to be a little bit greedier with it yeah. and try and wait for a higher. But now, like the the mini bot just easily dies easily. Yeah, it'll be interesting whether he uses two minions. Oh no. Just because, like, this is a consecrate board, if there ever was one. Yeah, it is. There's not consecrate for now, but uh, top deck would be pretty good. And this is just the inherent flaw in Reno decks, right? Like, you need a consecrate right now, and there's probably only one in your deck. Yeah, so now you exactly. steal the juggler with this, and then you just point do Ah, didn't win. <laughs> and what's kind of different in a Reno Paladin versus Reno Warlock is Warlock has multiple AoE spells yes. anyway. So yeah. there's the Shadow Flame, Hellfire, and even Demon Wrath that we see a lot, a lot of Reno Locks yep. play. So even though you don't have duplicates most warlock decks like that only run three aoe's anyway right so then you still have three AOE, yeah, AOE, you're just playing so you still slightly okay. lesser quality aoe yeah um and also like warlock can just freely draw cards whenever they want to make sure yeah, that they, they, they hit those one offs there's a reason reno warlock's probably the exactly. most popular deck yeah. right card draw is good mm -hmm. draw as many cards as i want and you're not allowed to kill me ever that sounds <laughs> like a pretty solid strategy <laughs> low is gonna come down and just sort of chance the pouch and sort of Sort of demand an answer. I mean, there's an option that Kranich could just ignore it at this point, but playing the deck he is, I imagine he's going to deal with it. Somehow. Well, it's a Paladin, so what would you expect on turn six? Uh, uh, just because the juggler and the uh, and the one one and the face can deal with the yeah. belt. Uh, expecting uh, the belt to the low well, He does just, just go for it. He's on 13 health actually. I didn't yeah, even I notice it. his health. Just and again, this face. this might come down to Kranich's research. Like, Jules does does he know that he's playing the quicker deck here? Does he yeah, know that yeah, he's yeah, playing yeah, exactly. against the greedy deck? Like, if if so, this is definitely right. Like, you Michael can't Schultz take the game long. Yeah, I think you have a good idea anyway. What? Jewel Scarab targets from Paladin is there. There's um, Muster, oh. Muster um, Seal of Champions, yeah. Outdoor Peacekeeper. A lot of good stuff. So that's Master three. Over spark. Hmm. Uh, is, there, is there any more? I'm uh, just thinking there's other classes that have a lot more, right? Yeah, like I'm just Sharp, wondering Sharp how good it is in Paladin. Ton, but yeah. Tink Master Over Spark. Yeah, that's Pick, an it. Card. Pick it for the lols. <laughs> well, Please. right now he's so much behind. Uh, how much damage is it even for him? If he kills the Belcher, there's at least seven, eight. He nine, could turn the the ten. shredder into a one one. It's he's sticking alive. It's just lethal, lethal, right? Because of the yeah. quartermaster, it's just going to be lethal. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Turn, yeah. yeah, that's far, that's too much. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little bit too greedy in this matchup. Obviously, having Chromagus and cards like that in hand early on hasn't been great for jungle, but. His deck is insane. It's pretty fun. Like, it oh, it's great. I'm just saying it's insane. Insanity can be fun sometimes. And he is here, one step from the top 16, actually. So, unfortunately for Jungle Bird, Kranich is going to take it with the Paladin again. And then Jungle Bird is down to his Mage deck. And is it Dragon Mage? This just saying, guys. I just saying. Dragon Reno Mage <laughs> incoming. <laughs> please. Oh. Please. If so, he's my favorite player in this whole tournament. I just want to see Gruul. Yeah, that'd be sick. Just playing all the legendary cards he got. <laughs> he opened legendary cards, he put them in the deck because he heard they were good. Jungle's mm -hmm. gonna play the um the legendary with the monkey, right? That's that's gonna be in his deck. The at monkey some point. legendary? At least. Uh, oh, the yeah, yeah, the yeah, the yeah, the gold monkey. The, the, yeah, the night elf the, cartographer. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I know that? Nimsh is supposed to be the guy with the lore, and I'm supposed to know nothing. How did I come up with that? Because you write name? about cards. That's yeah. true, actually. What was the name of the card? Elise Starseeker, I think. Yeah, She's in the next wing, right? Oh, yeah, got him. Is she the next wing? I don't know one if that's Elise or, or the Murloc. I think it's I hope Murgleton. It's the Murloc. I think it's Murgleton next week. I Th think. That card. Yes! Yes! That it actually <laughs> is! It actually is Reno Mage! Uh, oh my god. What and, and am I watching right now, guys? But I just want to say League of Explorers has done this to Hearthstone. Yeah, and absolutely. I couldn't be happier. And you know what that was? That was Ethereal? Yeah, yeah, sure. the, the, yeah. yeah, the spell, the spell mm -hmm. Discover card. And right? the flavor text. <laughs> That's why Nimch is excited. It's not I because really it's an interesting card. That one is actually pretty funny. So, 
He might be an ethereal conjurer, but he's actually a solid conjurer. Oh no. That's, that's, that's quite good. Uh, it, it's right. so Seven bad it's good. Ten. It's so bad Seven it's good. I'll give it to you. It's um, and Chromacus! Chromacus again, yeah. yeah. I mean, Chromacus that's, in every deck. That's just expected oh, this at this is, point, right? But I'm, this is amazing, right? So this isn't like round one Swiss. No. Where like anyone who's, you know, paid to play can just turn up, right? Mm -hmm. This is for the spot in the top 16. These decks have won him yeah. enough matches to get at this to this point. Yeah. This, this, this is incredible. This guy is 7-2 and two against a field of 200 really, really strong Hearthstone yeah. players. Yeah, he's just destroying them with Chromagus every game. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, as you were saying, you know, League of Explorers has done this to the game, and it, it's honestly like I'm loving the expansion. I think like the the response from most pros. Yeah, has I been don't very think positive. I've heard anyone complain. And like, it's, it is um, almost undoubtedly like the biggest meta shift we've had since Nax Ramus, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. But the thing is, the like Nax Ramus shifted the meta in terms of the cards were super powerful. Yeah. But it, with this, I've never seen so much deck variation. Right. And it's, it's, are, it's silly. It's, and we are actually only two wings in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. there's still yeah. like three more. So yeah. Finley Mergleton, ah, oh, con Control Hunter incoming. <laughs> Armor <laughs> up will I'm be amazing. I'm just loving it so much. So Jungle Brawler should get an Explorer's hat because he is the 100% Explorer with what all those decks, with yeah. Bran, with Reno. Yep. He has everything. And yep. th th to be fair, like, like you said earlier, depending on how much information Manich has got, what, is he just going to be like, what am I playing? Like so what we've seen, we've seen turn two ping, turn three secret, turn four cone of cold. So yeah. he does, if he doesn't know what he's playing yeah. against, he thinks he's playing against freeze mage. Yeah. It's a good indication that it's freeze mage. Um, but he's, oh, this is, it's echo giants, right? Or, no, no, it, it just can't has be. Echo. It can't be because he has Reno, right? Yeah, so he's just, just playing one molten, one look, echo. He needs one of everything, right? And Chromagus. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. brain hurts. It's a real thunder. <laughs> <laughs> my brain actually hurts. The only problem here okay. is, although there's, so this. The win condition here, looking at the board at the moment, is for Kranich to... Guy, what? Hi there. <laughs> oh, okay, Lord, so can so Kranich you forget what I said for a moment? Because that's Law Walker Chell. Yeah, yeah. The, even Kranich was laughing at that. He was like, um, well, <laughs> that is, that's an interesting card against Freeze Mage. It's good for him, because he, do, he doesn't need, like, yeah. he doesn't have no drawback. Here. But then there's have not Freeze Mage. All the Emperor Thoris arms you've yeah. ever wanted. There you so go, now, he, now he'll think it's Echo Giants, right? Yes. So and they, and it's still not, but it plays in a similar way now because what he'll want to do is play Molten Giant, Echo, and I'll play Molten Giant Reno Echo. How do you kill this guy? How do you place it? Whoa! Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you supposed? Because then it's like right. So what I've got to do is get him down from thirty. He Reno's. Get him down to th uh, from thirty. He Reno's again. Get him down from thirty. He has to deal ninety damage. And he's, and he's gonna have another molten giant to fill in the middle. When you get him yeah. down again, yeah, he yeah, will yeah. have another molten giant. You just re giant reset the board. Yeah, by the time we get there, he was actually gonna huh. be in fatigue like halfway through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's potentially gonna have to do ninety damage. Yeah. And the mage has like Ysera as well. Yeah. And <laughs> chain <laughs> Thorazons to just completely <laughs> reduce his hand. How does Lord Walker Cho change his matchup though? Yeah, that's that's questionable, right? Because if it's not, if it's still on the board when the echo happens, yeah. then you kind of remove the possibility of like starving Kranich out of resources and yeah. keep healing because he's going to be able to refill. So, kind of interesting. But at the same time, if you give him echo, he's not going to cast echo until he's able to kill his own Law yeah. Walker. He's not going to give you another echo as the echo mm -hmm. deck. Like. Yeah, I think because of the position, like you have to sort of ignore Law Walker for for jungle here. Because as you said, you can't like. He probably won't want to give him the same spells back because his deck is built for this, whereas the Paladin's deck isn't. What are, so what are the doubles, advantage. though? Is the, is the Reno active now? There won't be any doubles. No. So like only I, I can't yeah, imagine this this any is, world in which there's doubles. This is exactly what Raven talked about. Yeah. We're just going to... Reset. Just reset the game again. He chooses Plus uh, 16. He doesn't echo, though. He didn't have the mana. Echo he didn't was have the mana to two. echo, yeah. Oh, I don't... I think that's a bit... I think that's... Yeah, yeah that's, that's a misplay. very, very strange. Um... So hang on, three, six, seven, eight. He, he, how much health did the mage have? It's like fourteen or something, right? Fourteen. So like, yeah. you're not. Are you afraid oh, of God, lethal? Is that why you just thought you had to commit? So I don't think you are, right? He like, I mean, based on the look on his face right now, he thought he was going to get to echo it next turn. Oh. Either that, or he just miscounted and he's got punished for it. But I this think is a problem. I think this might just be the game. Yeah, because what does he echo now? Like he can echo emperors. Heal I guess, bots. But he can still heal bots. Yeah. He can. Tr oh my God, he can echo chromagus. Well, now board is a problem though. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. he. You know, having another Reno actually lets you, you know, say, okay, you can have this board for a while. Like, heal bots aren't going to do yeah, the he, job. He has this like board. three games worth of health. Yeah. So it's like he's got exactly. the time. 
And and with cards like you, Sarah, then like the longer the match goes, the better off you are, right? Mm -hmm. Well, can you play Sarah now and try to get uh, the clear? Because you need to deal with this board as soon as possible. So there's three, six, ten. There's only thirteen. So if you, yeah, I think you just have to, right? I think he feels like Ysera will get immediately answered because of, you know, they, it, it could be Owl, it could be a quality, it could be Keeper. You know, we, we see none of those, oh. but he, yeah, sister. it's probably worth it just to go oh, for the Always one. equality Kranich. when there's Ysera. You play Ysera, <laughs> I insta-draw equality. Sotl's uh, facial expression is the best <laughs> thing. Yeah, have, they, have they changed the text on Ysera? Like, does it now read, draw a copy of equality for your opponent? So this is rough now. Because the, the problem now as well is if Ysera gives him... Oh, oh. Flame Strike! Look at that! Does but still Flame that Strike might, change anything? That might be no. not enough, but um, that's something. Uh, I mean, it, okay, so it addresses the board now, first and foremost. That's important. Um, and then from there, basically, like he's just going to be under threat from the damage from the, the Ashbringer. Because yep. he has such massive card advantage that he can like fight for resources oh. perfectly. And, and the 1-2. Uh, right, right, right. Um, but... Now with the board gone, heal by Echo might actually be good enough to keep him in the game. Yeah. So that is actually a really, really important um, flame strike, especially since this first Ashbringer swing probably has to go at that Acera. I think he can actually. Uh, so I can't quite see nope. the mana, but <laughs> <laughs> or boom. Because I was thinking, like, could he even like maybe laughing sister heal by Echo and get you know like at least right. some minions on the board that he can play to start pushing back? But without and this is the issue. If he if he had Reno. Yeah, you could just really reset again and then go again. You yeah, know, like Thunderer now. Yeah, yeah. He can <laughs> What's he gonna fun? draw? Like another, another flame strike. So we do have big game hunter Healbot this turn. He can choose to echo this if he wants to, and I would imagine that's gonna happen. I you need he the has, heal, right? He has six mana left, so he can afford to fit in another minion if he wants the to. The dragon, Emerald Drake, possibly looks like the best option. Oh, he's, he's gonna, gonna go ahead and ping. Well, that's actually what okay. like eight damage, eight damage incoming. Okay, 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 okay. Why, why is Echo of Medivh in your deck? <laughs> I mean, so, <laughs> yeah. Why, if, if you're not gonna play it on the the Molten Giant Do turn, and you're not gonna play it there, I, I don't. Chromagus. You want to have as many Chromagus as possible. Do, of the, course. The, of you, course, Nim. Do, do you know what's you've worse? It. Do you know what's worse? Look at the board. Mm -hmm. You know you've given your opponent a flame strike. Yeah. Like the. <laughs> yeah. It all dies. Oh, he didn't even need it, but... Yeah, he, he's not looking too happy no. right now. Well, it is stressful sitting there. Jungle Burr knows. He's um, in a very bad position. And Kranich doesn't need to do anything else now. Um, we didn't see the ice block, and that's it. And again, yeah. like, the Echoes. He, he could have heal it, so that would have been, what, nine? He would have been on... Okay, so he would have had a low chance with, it, with a heal bot again this turn. But with Ice Block, that or would have helped, I guess. An ice block, actually, it, yeah. it was the Reno, right? Surely the whole point of the deck is that you can echo Reno, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. massive. Because you look at his hand. His hand will win any game that goes for another 10 turns. Yeah, easily. I would, I would love to see the scenario that they actually painted with uh, Reno being echoed and then... It's like Reno, Malt, and Echo. It's the best thing, because then you just do it again later. I mean... Yeah. Like it, it's it's hard sometimes as a caster because everyone plays the game differently. Everybody you know has different things about matchups. They they play it in different ways. So your job as a caster is like to try and get into the head of the person that's playing and try yeah. and understand what they're trying to do. But I I don't understand mm. the, the 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 use of echo there is just bizarre to me. Well, the thing is like uh, Jungle Bro is playing the, for the first time on the feature table. Sure, and he brought his decks. He is really stressed for sure. Like, look at him, and he's really emotional. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't think about the plays. Mm -hmm. yeah. You make the plays by default. It's like, oh, I need to. I, I'm yeah, really you run autopilot. You've done it so many yeah, times exactly. that you just throw right. it down and be like, oh, oh, hang yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually one manner of doing that too. It, it can happen. So it, it does favor Kranich in the situation. Kranich double blitz on low up experience. And there is. Yeah, this is about as polarized as the experience of Tom. Yeah. So that Tom and Switch can get. Absolutely. He got out of eyes like he was so happy. Okay, about it. he he must have outs in his deck. There must be an Alex Straza or something because he's way too excited about ice blocks right now. Like ice blocks don't do anything. Is yeah. Alex Straza even out at this point? I don't know, heal. but he believes. You can <laughs> see on his face yeah. that he believes. Well, for him, even one more turn is so. What he's doing great. is he's Thorus now, and then what he's going to do is play the other uh, Kondra. Is that what it's called? Ethereal Kondra. Ethereal Kondra, yeah. Uh, for another ice block. Just to just sit and make this game last as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Get that string time. He definitely wants to keep Boombots alive here just because, just to make life as awkward as possible. Yeah. So. 
shots with the weapon. He's just going to go ahead and lay on hands just to get himself out of the way of any crazy nonsense because he knows that hand has been emperored about six times yeah. in total. Yeah, <laughs> can probably so. just play it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so just heal up, get out of the way of any possible nonsense and just say, okay, you know, you've, you've got your two ice block out. So have, you got, have you got another one for me? Oh, bless All right, guys. So is there anything from the plunder yeah, that can He can get save. another ice block. Another, another <laughs> ice block. <laughs> Arcane so Explosion! A, Arcane, a, Arcane Explosion, he can technically live on. Yeah. No, he can't. Well, Blizzard. He can cast Blizzard, right? Uh, yeah, so he can So if he Blizzards and both Boombots hit, then he has a yeah, chance. Yeah, exactly. No, he has, a, he has a one. There's Consecration. Right. Oh, yeah, but, I'm but just from, from his, from point, his, of view, from his oh, point of view. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Like, Blizzard does is the only thing that actually well keeps played. him alive. Uh, he, he, could do, he could do Arcane Explosion fire. Alright, well. Arcane Explosion right. to... Oh, oh there we go. So Jungle Bro goes down with so many cool decks, and Kranich is actually the 16th player to join our top 16. A good run for Jungle, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah really, really impressive. Absolutely. With those decks as I'm well. I'm so happy he made it to stream, yeah. because yeah. he's one of the players. I'm sure there was a couple of players like him, or maybe he's the unique one, but he was playing here. He got really far. He will be 17, and he is 17, in, in fact. But we would never see those decks. Mm -hmm. And he, he went so far with his own decks, with his own brews, and they were amazing to watch. That was so much fun. It was one of the most fun series yeah. we had. Yeah, it was so good. And just seeing like just decks like that that have factually worked in a hard tournament setting is is incredible. I think like a, a good chunk of this will just be an experience issue, to be honest. Like we, you know, mainly that last game, there was a few sure. there yeah. were a few plays that I think were just wrong. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't maybe even an opinion. I just think it's it's wrong. Wait, Alex, you're supposed to be the nice guy. You're oh, taking oh, my it's job. You. Too much time with you. <laughs> One cast with you, and I'm negative, right? Yeah. Guys, but does it really matter? Like he came here to to play the tournament to have fun to enjoy the experience he played right. versus many pro players he was able to show his deck he was uh, he was able to win like he can tell he can go back and tell the story to his own fireside gathering group hey guys i competed i played versus Kranich. this guy was playing at blizzcon yeah. and i was here i played versus him i lost but uh, i was able to he play got my so far player. though yeah absolutely. basically so like, far. only he can really tell you whether that's important or not like wh having come this far has he felt like okay i really want to make it now like is he happy to have just come this far and been as successful as he has or is he now disappointed because he was so close to top 16 at blizzcon you know you'd have to talk to him you'd have to see what his attitude is but hopefully either way he takes this as motivation to to step forward and step up and compete in more tournaments and get his name out there because absolutely he obviously has some promise yeah. that's that's the start of his story and i really want Want to see more of him but i think guys the bracket is ready so let's see who actually made it to the top 16. we can see it right oh. now so round of 16 and we'll see most of the matches uh today all of them will be played today so uh, we'll have to wait for tomorrow hoy versus kranich and then orange versus rdu torlok from france versus born to win from czech republic tomov versus rc purple dragon albert ak wonder secrets Boris, Zetalot, Green Sheep, Th Syntex. So out of 200 players, mm -hmm. this is our top 16. Do you Just know what's really strange about this bracket? Top seed versus bottom seed. Hoy versus Kranich. You've got to feel, as Hoy, you've got to feel a little bit like, that's not the best bottom seed he probably could right. have come up against. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Kran Kranich isn't like, oh, well, this is the worst player in the 16. It's yeah. like, on paper, you just can't say that. Right. So Hoy's probably thinking like, Oh, okay. Um, but the, some of these matches, I mean, Orange versus RDU is the one that's coming up next. That's going to be great. And I definitely want to see more of Purple's Maligos luck. Absolutely. Because yeah. that's one of the standout decks. Sure, yeah. Definitely. Because, sure. like, Hoy performed exceptionally well. And his Secret Paladin was the main one there that put out <laughs> so many wins. <laughs> yep. But, but like, the Maligos luck is a deck that's very much, like, dipped in and out of, of meta and right. popularity. But with the addition of, say, Bran that makes yeah. things a little bit more interesting. And the fact that, again, Purple's performed so well with that deck. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to see how it performs going forward. So what do you think about the bracket? I mean, there were 200 players and you were one of them. So a lot of great players played and uh, people mentioned randomness in Hearthstone. But after that, at this top 16, there's a lot of known names. Yes. And also a lot of people who I personally know because I've seen them competing. Yes. And this is their tournament. This is their chance to shine. Right. Um, and this is something that like the average viewer doesn't really get a chance to appreciate too often. It's just like... You know, there's there's like 30 to 50 like big names in Hearthstone, but underneath that, there's like another hundred or so players who are just as good, if not better, than those players. So when you look at a bracket like that and you think, you know, some people like uh, I don't know, like Powder, etc., didn't come through the bracket. 
people would be tempted to look at that and go, oh, you know, Hearthstone is random. Why didn't these big name players get through? Those names in that bracket that you haven't heard of, they're all fantastic Yeah, players. they're actually really good. Um, yeah. They know how to play and they've got through, you know, one of the toughest Swisses in Hearthstone ever because they know how to play. That's why they're here, so. Yeah, and that's that was an amazing start of the of the Swiss uh, big tournament. Now the top 16 is going to be played, but before that, we're going to jump into a short break, and after that, we'll have all the top 16 matches for you. Five will be streamed, and three will be played on the secondary stream, so we might actually look at them b and, and show you as much as possible, but for now, we need to go into the break and set up the top 16, so stay tuned for more Hearthstone action. 